Hi, we're back, and today we're going to start uh, Forces and Dynamics Unit, and we're going to start off with the three laws of classical mechanics, better known as, or otherwise known as, Newton's laws. So the first one states that any object will travel any object will travel with a constant velocity unless acted upon by a net external force. And the second part to this, so that this isn't the full first rule. There is a second part to this, but it's, it's all essentially identical. It says any object will remain at rest unless acted upon by a net external force. So You'll notice that they're essentially we're kind of repeating the same thing. What's different about these two? Any object will, and now let's change this and let's underline travel with a constant velocity. That's different from this. This part says will remain at rest. And of course, the rest is the same unless acted upon by a net external force, unless acted upon by a net external force. Why do we have to have one rule, which is the first rule of, dyna of dynamics, classical mechanics, that has to be repeated twice? So the reason for this is not because physics is flawed, but rather, I believe, it's because our language is flawed. And the reason why our language is flawed is because, as humans, we view these two different things, constant velocity and at rest, to be different things, when in fact, they're not. They are the same thing, but we just can't, we don't have words to describe it unless we specify them differently. So that's why, before we move on, I'm going to kind of pull my board over here and let's do a let's do a uh, uh, wrong color let's do an imagination experiment so just a piece of trivia Albert Einstein once stated that imagination is more important than knowledge. So what is our experiment here? We're going to have a, a spaceship and this spaceship has a window in it and there's another spaceship and also has a window and they're facing each other and you're in this one and you look out the window and you see the other spaceship and you see that it's getting closer to you. Now the other thing you need to know here is that there are no stars, no planets, nothing else in the universe except these two spaceships. Now you gotta ask yourself if you're getting closer to the other spaceship who's moving? Is it this space is the other spaceship moving towards you or 
is the other spaceship not moving and you are moving towards the other spaceship. Pause the video here and see if you can come up with some type of an experiment to determine which spaceship is moving. <coughs> so the uh, answer to this thought problem is in fact that it is impossible to determine which spaceship is moving. Now, if you kind of if you look at my hands here, I know that it, is one moving to is one moving or is the other one moving or perhaps are they both moving? We're going to assume here that only one of them is moving and also we're going to assume that there's no acceleration. So, even if you some a, a common actually uh, type of experiment many people think of is open the window, put an apple outside and let go of the apple. Well, in both cases if you're if you're not moving, the apple's just going to float there because there's no gravity when you let go of it and it's not going to move in relation to where you are. And in the other situation where you are moving, well, the apple is also moving with your constant velocity and so when you move your, put your hand outside the window the apple's still moving with you at the constant velocity and when you let go the apple is not going to move away from you it's going to travel with the exact same velocity that you had so it's going to look exactly the same as if you were not moving in fact there's no way to determine one from the other and the reason for this is because zero velocity is the same is a constant velocity and there's no way to tell the difference between zero velocity and something which is not zero because it's all relative to something else. So in fact this law here that I have written down doesn't really need to be stated twice. The only reason I stated it twice is because as humans we perceive constant velocity and at rest to be different when in fact they are the exact same thing in terms of physics. So let's move on now to the second law. And the second law states it's it's the second law is actually an equation and it relates force is a net force I should say net force is equal to mass times acceleration so the equation here we write is we say F net is equal to M a and this equation is very famous probably one of the most famous physics equations there is and it relates how net force and acceleration are related now the one thing I will state is that if an object if the acceleration on an object is zero then the net force must also be zero so let me just kinda make a side note here right is I could say if acceleration equals zero therefore net force on the object must e also equal zero and the third law of classical mechanics is or states that for every action force there is an equal and opposite reaction force. Now the, um, the classic one I like to give in, in this one is let's say for example um, you are in the playground and um, there's a bully that walks up to you 
and says, uh, give me your lunch money or I'm going to punch you in the face. If you've studied physics and you specifically you know uh, classical mechanics third law, you could state to that person, if you punch me, I will hit you back with the exact same force and there's nothing you can do about it. Hopefully that will might scare the bully into not punching you. But on the off chance that the bully does still punch you in the face, you can then say, see, I told you, I hit your hand with my face with the exact same force that your hand hit my face. And that's true. Now, unfortunately, faces are softer and more delicate and more painful than hands, so it, it, it might not work, but it's, um, it's still true. Another way of thinking about this is you cannot push something without being pushed yourself. Um, so the next topic that I'd like to go over is free, we need to be able to draw free body diagrams. Okay, These are called FBD. What is a free body diagram? So essentially what you do is you draw a picture of an object. So in this case let's take a let's take a book on a table. Okay, so a book. This is a very classic one. Book on table. Ask yourself this is like uh, for grade 11 or for, you know, for high school physics at least there are um, there are other forces that can work at a distance but in high school the main one is gravity there really are uh, only a few other forces that can work at a distance and those are uh, electrostatic forces, uh, magnetic forces, and um, the other ones are part of quantum mechanics that are uh, basically inside atoms, the strong nuclear force, but we're not going to deal with that. So the most important one for us is gravity. So let's write uh, a sentence that I'd like you to memorize. And the sentence is, I'll put a star beside it, what's touching it plus gravity? Since we're not dealing with electrostatics and magnetism, essentially the only way that a force can exist on an object is if something is touching it thereby applying a physical force by pushing or pulling and the and the only other one which can work at a distance without touching an object is gravity so therefore we will say if this is the table and we'll assume that the book is on the table then what's touching the book well the table is and which direction is the force of the table? We'll say that the force from the table is up. And we'll call that the normal force. So Fn is the normal force. And we call it normal because it is perpendicular to the table. And the word normal means perpendicular. Okay perpendicular or normal and this this normal force is being applied by the table on the book and it is up that is the only thing touching the book and so we finished the first part of this sentence what's touching it and now let's do the last plus gravity and in this case we'll write gravity as FG 
Now ask yourself this, is the book accelerating? What is the acceleration of the book? Well, the, the book is actually at rest. It's not accelerating. So the acceleration of the book is zero. If the acceleration of the book is zero, that means, remember from before, we had if the acceleration is zero, then the net force must be zero, right? Because of the second law. So in this case, F net, notice I don't, I use Fn for normal and I'll write F net for net force. That must also be equal to zero. Um, and another way, the, another uh, thing that I need to make clear here is that I need to write down the summation of the forces. And this is important. This, I will do this for every single free body diagram, which is the first thing really I should do here. And I'll do this in black. I'll say the sum of the forces is equal to the net force. That's what the, that's what the definition of net force is. It's the sum. This, this symbol here is sig Greek letter sigma, and it means the sum of. Okay, the sum of all the forces. Now in this case, we're going to assume that up is positive. Okay? I usually choose up as positive, but we need to have a positive direction. Now that I know this sentence, I said, what's touching it plus gravity? I know that the table's touching it, that's the normal force, and that's the only thing touching it, plus gravity going down. I know, I can see now that there's only two forces on this book. So if I write this equation out, I could say Fn, which is positive, minus Fg is equal to the net force. But because the net force, or, or sorry, because the acceleration is zero, I also know that the net force is zero. So now I know since the normal force minus the force of gravity must equal zero, I know that the normal force must equal gravity. They're equal and opposite. So the normal force is up and the force of gravity is down. Now if you're wondering why did I, did I say sum of and yet I subtracted them? The reason for that is because I'm just skipping a step. If I was to write this again here, I could say Fn plus negative Fg equals zero. And the reason why I would say negative Fg is because the force of gravity is down. And since I have chosen up as being positive, Fn is positive, and since Fg is down, it is negative. And that is why if you add a negative number, it's like subtracting here a positive number. So essentially what all I do is if a force is in my positive direction, I, I just treat it as a positive number, and if a force is in the negative direction, like force of gravity is, instead of adding a negative, I simply subtract it. Hope that's clear. It's, uh, it's fundamental to understanding how to draw free body diagrams. Now the next uh, most obvious thing, which I should definitely state here is what is the force of gravity? So Fg equals what? Well guess what? Fg is a force and we know that from the second law that a force here, a force is equal to a mass times an acceleration. Well that means that the force of gravity is equal to the mass of the book multiplied by the acceleration of gravity, which in this case is g, where g 
is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. And, in fact, this g is a positive 9.8, and it's not a negative. Now, you might be a little bit perplexed here, because you might be saying, wait a minute, when we did kinematics, I distinctly remembered g being negative 9.8. And you'd be right. However, notice that I have drawn the force of gravity pointing down. I have already accounted for its downward direction with this negative, uh, maybe use a different color here, with this, with this negative right there. I've already accounted for its down. If I then put a negative 9.8, now I'm going to subtract a negative number. That's like adding a positive number. It, it becomes wrong. So the e an easy solution for this is what I say is in kinematics, where we don't have forces, I use negative 9.8 for acceleration of gravity, and I usually choose up as being positive. But for dynamics, where I have force vectors and directions on those forces, I choose g as being positive 9.8, and I let the force of gravity always point down. I would never draw the force of gravity pointing up. Okay? So in this case, um, you know, if I said, for example, if the book was, you know, um, two kilograms, uh, let me change back to black. If the book was two kilograms and 9.8 meters per second squared. Now that's the acceleration of gravity. However, now I want to show you a different unit. And that is that the ac acceleration of gravity can be written as 9.8 meters per second squared. And it can also be written as 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So if we go back to this equation, F net equals MA. Let's think about what the units of this is because we never really discussed the units. The unit of a mass is kilograms. The units of acceleration is meters per second squared. Now, the unit of a force on the left-hand side, this is a force. That's why we're using the letter F. That's equal to a Newton. And I, we write force unit down as a capital N. That means, notice here, that a Newton is equal to a, one Newton is equal to one kilogram meter per second squared. If we divide both sides by kilograms, I will then have a Newton divided by a kilogram. So I'm using these units essentially as variables. And if I divide this side, the right-hand side, by kilograms, I'm left with the kilograms cancel out, and I'm left with meters per second squared. So now you can see that a Newton per kilogram is the same as a meter per second squared. Specifically, there is slightly different words for this, but they are the same thing. I sometimes physicists will refer to this as acceleration and sometimes they'll refer to this as the gravitational field strength. Okay, so specifically uh, we're talking about 9.8 here. Okay. We'll say this is the gravitational field strength, and this is the acceleration uh, of gravity. Are they the same thing? Yes, they are. So hopefully that gives you a little insight into the force of gravity, which was here.
mass times m times g. And the most important equation is this one, f net equals ma. And that's the end of this lesson. Okay, actually, we're not quite finished with this video. What I forgot to state is the obvious here, and that is that the acceleration in this equation is equal to g. So notice in this equation, these two equations are essentially the same equation, except this is a, the gravitational force equation is a specific one of f net equals ma, where the a is equal to the acceleration of gravity. The other thing which I should state clearly here is that unless we know the mass of the book here, we don't know what either of these two forces are. That's why in this example, I s substituted a fictitious value of two kilograms for the book. That means if the book was two kilograms, the free body diagram would look like a normal force is equal to 19.6 newtons up and gravity is equal to 19.6 newtons down. And in this case, obviously, 19.6 cancels 19.6 and the net force ends up being zero and the acceleration is zero, therefore, and the book's not going anywhere. So now we're at the end.